so glad you're about to watch this service today. I hope you find it a blessing. I'd like to encourage you to pause the video for just a moment and get a string that will fit around your finger or your wrist or an ankle or somewhere like that. A string, a yarn, a ribbon, a long thing. So just pause right here, go get that string and come right back. your heart wide open though the waves wanna push you around mm, you gotta keep your heart wide open till your faith brings you back to solid ground mm, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep my heart I'm gonna keep wide open I'm gonna keep my heart wide open Though these waves, though these waves wanna push though me they want me around Though the waves wanna push me around I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep my heart I'm gonna keep wide open I'm gonna keep my heart wide open till my faith brings me back brings me back to solid ground until my faith brings me back to solid ground we gotta keep we gotta keep our heart we gotta keep wide open we gotta keep our hearts wide open keep all these ways wanna put us around Though these waves wanna keep don't you know we gotta keep we gotta keep we gotta keep wide open till we gotta keep 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 we We light this chalice, symbol of Unitarian Universalism. May it remind us of the divine spark in all of creation, the power of love to heal what is broken, and to be grateful for life's blessings each day. We light this candle in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement. And work for the day in which Black lives are treated equitably with dignity and justice. Welcome to the First Unitarian Church of Oakland's shelter in place worship service on sunday march 29th we are a people informed by our past embracing the spiritual challenges of today and creating a more just and sustainable and loving future these times call for us to be the best unitarian universalists we can be i am reverend sherry prudom your associate minister for faith development this morning, I will be leading a virtual children's chapel for children and their families at 10 o'clock. Our lead minister, Pastor Teresa Soto, has assembled this worship experience for us today on the theme, Laying Down the Burden of the World. Pastor Teresa will also be hosting an embracing meditation live on our Facebook page at 1020 and a virtual coffee hour on at 11.30 on their Zoom room. The details are in this week's Chalice Chatter. I hope you'll be able to join us. It will be good to see one another's faces and to have some conversation. In these uncertain times, it is good to be part of a lineage of strong and spiritually courageous people who have gone before us, 
who have been through hard times before us. It is our time now to be brave and compassionate together as a people. It is good to be together in worship. Welcome. I ask each of you to bring a piece of thread or string or something that you can tie around your wrist or your ankle or your finger. Please find that now. Hold that in your hand. Hold it out in front of you. I want to bless this thread. I want to bless this bright thread that binds you to me, that binds you to us, that binds all of us into community. Not to exclude others, but to bind our love. These next weeks may be hard. Breathe into that knowing. We will be, we will be tried with loneliness and others with boredom. Breathe into this awareness. We will be faced with anxiety and with grief. Breathe into this possibility. Breathe into the time coming. Remember to breathe. And if it seems too much, breathe anyway. This is the thread that runs between us. It says you are not alone. Although you may not see others in your space, this is the thread that runs between us. You are not alone on this journey, although you may have grief or fear. This thread is the thread that runs between us, reminding you to breathe, reminding you that you are held in love, reminding you to hold on. Hold on until we are together again. Look at this thread. It is blessed tie it to you, make it part of you, look at it each day. It is to remind you to breathe, to love, to hold on, to know that you are not alone. Amen. Ashe. Ashe. And blessed be. Blessed be. Hi friends, I'm the Reverend Sean Parker Dennison and I thought I might share a poem with you. It's due to be published this spring in the In Spirit Meditation Manual published by Skinner House, but I thought now might be an appropriate time to share it. 
It's called How to Survive the Apocalypse. First, learn to listen, not only for enemies around corners in hidden places, but for the faint footsteps of hope and the whisper of resistance. Hone your skills, aim your heart toward kindness, and stockpile second chances. Under the weight of destruction, we will need the strong shelter of forgiveness and the deeper wells that give the sweet water of welcome. We have a place for you. When the world ends, we must not add destruction to destruction, not accept a beggar's bargain to fight death with more death. In order to survive the apocalypse, any apocalypse at all, we have to give up the counterfeit currency of self-sufficiency, the mistaken addiction to competition, the lie that the last to die has somehow survived. Stick together, my friends. Take care of each other. Hi, I'm Debbie Kaplan, a longtime member of this church and on the worship associates team. So here we are, it's about two weeks into sheltering in place, and I've been um, ruminating about things and reading a lot. I'm sure lots of us have. And I came across something that is especially relevant to me I think relevant to everybody. It's from the Disability Justice Culture Club of the East Bay, um, a group that does a lot of political organizing and organizing for mutual aid and self-help. They are writing to people with disabilities about how to take care of ourselves during the pandemic. And they say, Think about what things you absolutely need to stay safe. And if you will need support from others, food, water, medications, laundry, errands, personal care, pet care, light housekeeping, support with decision-making, cooking, light administration, talk to your family if you have them, call previous caregivers and ask if they'll be backup. Think about three to four friends or community members you could trust to show them your routine or talk about support needs in advance. This can feel totally rotten in one way. This is an emergency. Trust that people are your friends because they get something from the relationship too. Trust your friends wanna see you safe. Interdependence makes us powerful. Needing and giving support is why we live in a society and not an island. Trust that people have the ability to set boundaries and will tell you no if they can't. Now, that's advice for people who use personal care services every day. I think it's advice for all of us. It's not easy to admit when you need help. And yet, I think that's exactly what our particular community needs right now. Um, let me also share with you something that I read this morning, written by David Vondrell, a Washington Post columnist. He went through last week um, a episode of COVID-19 illness that was severe enough to make him feel very, very sick for many days, but he did not have to go into the hospital. And he writes about it. The gift of this unpleasant infection has forced me to go past self-pity and weeping to a humbler understanding of myself and my place in a community. My weakness is my community's strength. The less I am good for, the more magnificent my family and friends become. The house is full of food. My email is miles deep in attaboys, and warm wishes. 
I ask for a blood oxygen monitor. 30 minutes later, it's on the porch. Doctors I've never met coach me through each step of the recovery. Readers who disagree with every word I write send assurance that they're praying for me. And friends who don't pray at all promise a double portion of whatever their strongest mojo might be. We all don't know what to do in a situation like this. We've never lived through anything like this before. And our community is so dear to all of us. I miss so much coming in on Sundays and seeing you, all of you, each of you, people I don't know who I just have a feeling it would be great to get to know people who I admire so much, people whose company I really enjoy. We're a truly remarkable community of people. And right now, we all need to get better at letting each other know what we need. All of us are looking for ways to feel like we're making a difference right now, to combat the feelings of helplessness and lack of control over anything. Helping a dear colleague, helping a friend, helping someone who's part of this community, even maybe removed two or three times through a friend of a friend, helping someone is a way that our community will stay together and be in a great place when we're finally able to come back on a Sunday morning and greet each other with beaming, smiling faces. So thrilled to be with each other in person as much as we've been with each other now. The giving link on the website brings you to this page. Click one-time donation and you get to this page. You roll to the bottom and you'll be able to put in the amount. You can also put a remark about your donation in the box on the right. Check the date and the amount on the bottom. And then you'll be able to click continue. That will take you to the payment page, credit or debit card, checking or savings. You can put your information and submit your gift. When I first joined the Unitarian Church, we always had a segment of each service called sharing of responsibility. And it sounded so serious, responsibility. And over the years, what I've come to understand for myself is that one of the reasons, and I think a big reason right now that we give to the church is because the church is us. The church is all of us. And together, we are able to do more. We are asked to do more as the First Unitarian Church of Oakland. Whether it's somebody who's homeless who comes to the church because they've heard that this is a place where their needs can get met in a way that they feel they're not losing their dignity. And it's a, it's a place that we stand up for justice. And there are really strong reasons to stand up for justice during this pandemic. Um, and together, we take care of each other in ways that require resources. 
So that's why I give and I'm really happy when the basket comes around, when I'm able to put money into that basket. Sometimes I can't. And when I can, it's a really good thing. Now there's no physical basket. Um, there is a form that you can fill out online. You just go to the First Unitarian Church of Oakland website, uuoakland.org, and click on the very top corner of the page, the top right corner, where it says giving, and that will take you to a way to do a one-time donation. Um, I do a one-time donation in addition to my pledge, and I'm really happy that I'm able to do that. I know it will be disposed of in a way that makes me feel good that I am doing something now. Hello. I'm really glad that you're listening from wherever you are, that we're sharing this time together asynchronously, that is across time and space at different times, but with a common purpose, to build this community, to love one another, and to make our values real in the world. I'm really glad that you're here with the heart that you have the concerns that you have, and the joys that you have. I know these times are different and uncomfortable, but I've also seen you rise to the occasion with generous compassion. People volunteering to be phone buddies. People volunteering to get groceries for those who need the assistance. Other kinds of connection and support. They really matter, and they show what's important to you. I'm grateful to see it. Let's take a moment. Join me in a spirit of prayer or meditation. We are grateful to be here together today, asynchronously, across time and space sharing our values. There are many people that we carry in our hearts. The people on the front lines, the nurses, the doctors, the ch chaplains, the disease specialists, the people who bring and provide our food, the people who take care of the mail, many others who are cleaning surfaces, and taking care of people who need it. We are grateful for them in this time, and we hold them in our care. We don't know exactly what comes next, but with gratitude, we remain together. I have good news for you to start off. I am delighted to announce that Claire Eustace saw the Ministerial Fellowship Committee of the Unitarian Universalist Association. That's a panel that gives an interview to potential ministers to see if they're ready or if they need to do more study and preparation. The committee has invited Claire to preliminary fellowship, which means that she'll soon be eligible for ordination and also for the privileges and responsibilities of being a Unitarian Universalist minister. This is great news and a great accomplishment into, into which a lot of work has been poured over time. If you're a person who has supported Claire on her journey, or even if you don't know Claire yet, please, as you're able, reach out and give your own Congratulations and best wishes. 
today, I'd like to talk about the spoons. You've heard this story before from Rabbi Ramshashak, who said that in hell there was a long banquet table. It was set with every delicious food people could imagine. But, as it was hell, there was a catch. And that is that those people only had within them, or within their reach, six-foot spoons. Now, a six-foot spoon might be good for social distancing, but they definitely couldn't feed themselves. They couldn't bring the food to their mouths. And so their stomachs were hungry and sore and they struggled. By comparison, there was a similar banquet in heaven. Every delicious food you could imagine. But again, those six foot spoons. In heaven, the people decided to feed one another. Tricky, right? I know you've heard it before, but I want us to breathe some new perspective into this story this way. When I ask you to contemplate laying down the burden of the world, I'm actually talking about putting down the spoon that doesn't work and taking it up in a new way. What does that mean? What are we putting down in this time? Well, it turns out that people don't always have to come after profit. That people can come first sometimes and profit can come second. It turns out that people are more satisfied to be kind than to be right and more satisfied to share than to suppose that their neighbor is somebody else's problem. What does this mean for our internal lives? What does it mean for your heart? Well, one opportunity we have is to practice uncoupling our worth from our productivity. In fact, you've always been worth more than the things that you can do. You matter more than your tasks, your chores, your successes and achievements. And in this time, when some people are working extra hard to make sure others are taken care of, it's who they are that really matters. It's not just their actions, but the fact that their actions are bringing their values to life in the world. And for you, that's the same. Indigenous teacher White Eagle has this to say. He says, don't lose the spiritual dimension of this crisis. Have the aspect of the eagle, which from above sees the whole, sees more widely. There is a social demand in this crisis, but there's also a spiritual demand. The two go hand in hand. Without the social dimension, we fall into fanaticism. But without the spiritual dimension, we fall into pessimism and lack of meaning. If you're participating with our congregation, you've been noticing the patterns of meaning making that we engage in. We know in part what we want to do to respond to this crisis because we say that every person matters. And when you bring your values into the world, either by staying home or by being on the front lines or by checking in with compassion or anywhere else on the spectrum that you need to be, all of those things can be good and can be right if they're bringing more love into the world. If you're taking up the same spoon and using it in a different way. If you're looking out for your neighbor, 
just as you would want to be looked out for yourself. These are the things that are possible, and these are the things that are matter. These are the things that matter. We are in this for a long journey, not to hurry, not to rush, but to do both, be responsive and stay in it for the long term. White Eagle also says this, take your toolbox and use all the tools at your disposal. Learn about resistance with indigenous and African peoples. We have always been and continue to be exterminated, but we haven't stopped singing, dancing, lighting a fire, and having fun. Don't feel guilty about being happy during this difficult time. I'm going to read that line once more. Don't feel guilty about being happy during this difficult time. If happiness comes to your heart, this is my editorial note. I encourage you to accept it and also to share it with others. You don't help at all by being sad, White Eagle says, and without energy. It helps if good things emanate from the universe now. It is through joy that one resists. Also, when the storm passes, you will be very important in the reconstruction of this new world. You need to be well and strong. And for that, there is no other way than to maintain a beautiful, happy, and bright vibration. This has nothing to do with alienation. This is a resistance strategy. There's a lot for us to resist, but we can let in the compassion that leads to cooperation we can put down the spoons that aren't serving us and pick them up in new and different ways that make a difference not only for ourselves and those around us. And we can resist through joy. I'm wishing you all the best this week. I'm available by phone and email to talk about whatever comes up. And I'll be uh, sharing those different times in Chalice Chatter and other places. I'm wishing you all the best. I love you very much. Rejoice in love.